Welcome to another fast tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about ACCDE files, what they are, why you'd want to create one, how to create one, what to do if you get errors. We'll talk about reverse engineering one from an ACCDE back to an editable ACCDB file. And I'll give you some tips for both consultants and for database buyers about how to handle ACCDE files. All right, so first up, what is an ACCDE file? It's basically you take your database file, your ACCDB that you've been working on, and you want to distribute it. So you create an ACCDE file and Access will compile it in the machine code, making it execute only. That means people can't get their grubby little hands on your VBA code. Your form design, your report design, your modules are all locked down. Even if you trust everybody in your office, you still don't want them poking around in there and making a mess of your database and, you know, adding bugs and making stuff not work and breaking it and all that. Plus, if you got passwords and stuff like that hard coded into your VBA code, then, you know, they'll be able to see it. So you obviously want to lock down your database before you give it to your users. If you're still using an older version of Access from before 2007, this is going to be an MDE file instead of an ACCDE file. The new file format was introduced in Access 2007. Why do you want to create one of these? Well, again, like I just mentioned, it prevents unauthorized design changes. You don't want your users poking around in the design view of your ACCDB files. It protects your intellectual property. You know, you've spent your hard earned time and money making this database and you don't want people just, you know, copying it and playing with it and getting in there and messing with things. I've seen some articles mention a performance increase, but with modern computers nowadays, that performance increase is negligible. It's tiny, if anything. Back in the old days, like, you know, in the 90s, um, when Access would compile your MDB into an MDE, yeah, you'd notice a little bit of a performance increase, but not, not, not so much anymore. Your database is less prone to errors, a small bit. Again, when your code is compiled, it will run smoother, but again, that's negligible. It's basically used for distributing your database to regular users who don't need to change the database. They have to work with the database, right? Add records, view stuff, that kind of thing. But they're not going to be involved in the design of the database. And they can use an ACCDE file with either the full version of Access or you can give them the runtime edition, which is free. If you want to learn more about the runtime edition, I got a video for it right there. I'll put links down below. I'm going to mention a bunch of videos in this video and I'll put links to all of these down below in the description below the video window. Okay, so how do you create an ACCDE file? It's real simple. First, you're gonna back up your database. All right, proper database backup, very important. And even if you have a nightly backup, don't rely on it before you make your ACCDE file. Make a manual copy of your full database file. All right, email it to yourself or put it in a server folder somewhere or put it on a floppy disk. <laughs> Remember those? Okay, but back up your file manually. Then you're gonna open up your ACCDB file, go to File, Save As, and you'll see Save As an ACCDE file. Here, let me show you. All right, here's a copy of my Tech Help free template. That's the ACCDB file, the editable version. Open it up, go to File, Save As, and right there, make ACCDE. Your file will be compiled into an executable only file. Pick that, Save As, give it a name, Hit save. All right, nothing appears to happen. I wish they'd give you some kind of a message, but they don't. But if you close that database, wherever this file was on your desktop, wherever you saved it to, you'll see now you have an ACCDE file. And if I open this guy up, notice that I can't go into design view in any of the forms. I can't go into design view in my modules. All right, double click, it yells at you. Okay, and now you have an ACCDE file, and this is the one you're going to give to your users. And if you had linked tables in here, they should still keep the same links and all that. So if you got a server folder, everything should be linked the same as the original database. Now, very important, don't lose your original ACCDB file. You can't get it back. Toward the end of this video, we're going to talk about an option where it is possible to reverse engineer this, but there are some caveats. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, if you get errors when you're making that ACCDE file, there are a few things to check, and I got videos to explain most of this stuff. First, you might wanna have to open your database exclusively if other people are using the database. 
then you won't be able to create an ACCDE file out of it. If you don't know what that means, here's a video for you. You may have errors in your VB code and you can find those by compiling your code. Again, this database will teach you all about compiling your database. You may have missing references, especially if you've copied this database from another system. There you go, missing or broken references. I got videos for everything. If you're making a 64-bit ACCDE file and you got 32-bit code in there, that's not gonna work out also. There you go, go watch this one, we'll get that fixed. Also keep in mind that ACCDE files are specific to the bitness version. So if your users have 32-bit office, your database has to be 32-bit. If they've got 64-bit, likewise. You can't flip-flop between the two. And in some older versions of Access, if you've got empty subroutines or functions in there, that might cause uh, an error when you're making the ACCDE file, so go get rid of those, or at least put a comment or something in there. All right, some additional tips. You can do a lot of things to also secure your database in addition to making the ACCDE file. I cover those in my simple security tips video. All right, simple security. It's, it's security that's good enough for most work environments. You learn how to hide your sensitive objects, hide the navigation pane, disable the ribbon. And I talk about making an ACCDE file in this one too, but not quite as detailed as I am right now. And also keep in mind, even though you've secured the front end, the design of your database, your tables, queries, and macros are still unsecured. People can still go in and mess with those. Now, as far as protecting your data goes, everyone always asks me this question. The data in the tables is not secured. People can still, if they know how to use access, they can still find your backend file, open up the tables, and read or edit the data in there. That's necessary for them to be able to use the database. Now there's a couple things you can do. First, you can put a password on that backend database and everyone will have to type in that password when they open up the database. All right, here's a video on how to do that. The problem with this is it's one password for everyone. So that'll prevent like people who aren't supposed to be in the accounting database, you know, the non-accounting folks, right? Give them their own password, but all six of the accounting people will have the same password. If you want to encrypt the database and give each user their own logon, I do have a full security seminar where I show how to do that. I'll put links to that down below as well. Another option is you can encrypt the data, which is basically scrambling it with your VBA code so that it looks unreadable, right? People can still open the table and look at it, but they'll just see gibberish, right? I got a seminar for that too. If they open up the table, that's what they'll see. But of course, the best way to secure your data in a sensitive environment is to use a database server like SQL Server, all right? An access front end, your forms and reports and stuff, with an SQL Server back end is the best combination for a secure database. And of course, I got a seminar explaining how to set up access and SQL Server online. So you can connect your access database to an online SQL Server, share it with everybody around the world, put it on the web, whatever you want to do. All right, now here are some tips that Everybody always asks me about this stuff because they're either consultants and they make access databases to sell or work on for clients, or they're people who, you know, they know a little bit of access, but they don't necessarily want to build their entire database. They want to hire someone else to build it for them. Here are some things to consider. If you're a consultant, give your clients the ACCDE files. Explain to them what I just explained to you, that they should use that in their production environment so that their end users don't mess with the database design. If they insist on getting a copy of the ACCDB, that's fine, all right? If it's a database that you build custom for them from scratch, then great. I used to charge a little extra for that, but not a big deal. Just in case you get hit by a bus, right, they can still hire another consultant to come in and work on it. They have the original code, even though the ACCDE is in production in their office, changes can still be made by someone who knows what they're doing. If they had bugs, if they called me up and said, hey, something's not working, and they made changes, all I'm going to do is come in and restore the ACCDE file and see if that fixes the problem, right? If they made, you know, if they goofed it up because they were messing with the design, that's billable service. Now, later on in my career, I started working with a, a basic template that I built that had lots of bells and whistles in it, kind of like my tech help template. And if 
my client just wanted that with some modifications, they would of course have to buy the full library, you know, file. They wouldn't just, you know, they wouldn't get a full copy of that with just my little tweaks in it. So that's that's up to you. If you have like library functions that you use, okay, um, it's up to you whether you want to include that or not in the ACC DB file that you give them. Now, likewise, if you are a buyer, okay, make sure your developer gives you a copy of that ACC DB file. <laughs> I know I just said for the developer, be careful about that. But if you're buying the database, you want to have a copy of that. If that developer gets, you know, uh, killed in a tragic starship accident in SETI Alpha 5, you want to make sure you've got a copy of your database. All right. Expect to pay extra for it, but I wouldn't work with a custom developer that wouldn't give me a copy of the source. That's just me. If you guys are interested, I got a whole page that I put together that's got all kinds of different questions that uh, consultants always ask me, people who are, you know, doing... Uh, access database design for a living. And this is the stuff that in my 20 plus year career as a consultant, I put together. Like, you know, there's always someone who charges less. That's the number one uh, stumbling block that a lot of developers come across is that, oh, the client says they can get someone else and, you know, uh, to do it a lot cheaper. Well, yeah, okay, great. Let them do it cheaper. Someone always charges less. So check out this page. I'll put a link down below if you want to learn more. Okay, now, another big question that people always ask me, is it possible to go backwards? I lost my ACCDB file. All I've got is an ACCDE. Can it be reverse engineered? The answer is no, generally not, with just access by itself. You can't. There's no way to go backwards with just access. However, it is possible for it to be reverse engineered by someone who knows what they're doing. Wayne Phillips, an Access MVP over at everythingaccess.com, has a service where he will reverse engineer ACCDE files and create an editable ACCDB file out of it. He does require that you prove that's your database, that you own it. I get a lot of people all the time that I think are kind of shady. They have a database they want to reverse engineer, and I'm like, no, is it yours, or do you steal it from work? <laughs> so, no, I wouldn't do it. But uh, now I haven't checked this out myself. I plan to soon. In fact, Wayne and I were emailing back and forth for a little bit there. And uh, I definitely want to send him one of my databases and see what happens, how, you know, how, what the results are. Several other MVPs I've talked to said that it, it does work. It's a good service. So check it out. I'll put a link to it down below. And I hope to do another video on Wayne's service very soon to give you the full deets on that one. But uh, there you go. There's your fast tip for today. That's all about ACCDE files. Now you can go and make them yourself. You know why you want to make them. You know how to make them. And uh, I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name 
listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.